Right. So since we have uh, discussed the application of education last week, let's write down the things, people. So we will write it in a very short form since uh, this is your normal life uh, that you are going to uh, experience. So have this subhead in application in the educational field. Right, uh, yeah. Application in the edu in the field of education. That's going to be this subhead in, and then you are going to write uh, the points in this uh, diagram. Uh, it is not that clear. I'll I'll read those things, people. So you may uh, write it right. And uh, yeah, write this particular sentence as the very first line. Then after as the examples, I'll uh, let you know about those things. Right, so this is going to be the very first point. And after this sentence, uh, you can continue the same point. Following shows. So after this sentence, you can continue. Following shows. Some examples. Halloween shows some examples regarding this. Following shows some examples regarding this. Right, okay, so under that, let's go to the uh, this particular subtopic in the classroom. Right, and uh, it's better you uh, write down these things, people, because these things point out the uh, things that you can have in your MCQ questions, right? So in the classroom, it's, uh, it's better you put a simple A in the classroom and uh, write down the uh, points right over here. And the people who are just joining, we start the uh, lesson. 
and we write about uh, two to three lines. So it's better you uh, leave two to three lines and uh, start copying this, right? So you can uh, find what we have written from the uh, recordings people. So, uh, so leave two to three lines and uh, start writing this. Okay, one is done. How about others? All right, anyone who is still writing? All right, so I'm moving forward. Ah, okay, okay, Sanitma and Sedini. Right, okay, right, okay. I'll give you another one or two minutes. I always uh, uh, addressing you as uh, Sanitma and Sedini. Is it, is it two of you or just uh, one of you in here? Ah, right, okay, right, okay. Right, so we can move forward. So under part, yeah, under simple B, education, anywhere, anytime, let's write it like this. Yeah, right, this has the first point under it.
yeah, as well as these points, people. Uh, Sanoshi CD-ROM media means the, uh, the the things that we can use inside the CD-ROM. That means CDs, DVDs, and Blu-rays. Right? Those are the CD-ROM media. Right? It has three types. I think you have experience about about those things. At least the CDs and DVDs. Even though you are not touched with Blu-rays, I don't. I don't think you are not touched with Blu-rays. You, you, you have. You must have, right? So, like uh, the the media that you can use inside your CD-ROM. The CD. You know what is the CD-ROM is, right? It is the uh, uh, the device or the component that's allowing you to put the CD or insert a CD into the computer, right? And nowadays, some of the laptops are not uh, coming. With a, uh, they are not included with the CD-ROM, right? Uh, now people are like uh, getting used to these uh, pen drives and all these things, the portable devices. But still, uh, CD-ROM plays a good role in uh, most of the computers. Uh, no, Rison, uh, it's the, it's only the highlighted part, uh, Rison, uh, regarding uh, B part, it's only the highlighted things. Yeah, and uh, people, uh, I have a, a one particular request for to uh, to do from all of you. Like, uh, can we can we start the session like uh, five or ten minutes earlier? Because I'm having a, a class at sharp at five. So when I'm finishing you, I'm starting the class right away over here. Is there anyone who is uh, having any difficulties to? Uh, connect with the class okay will it will it be a problem if i started like 315 instead of 330 315 if there is anyone who is having a problem just uh, let me know lot are saying there is no problem is there anyone who is facing any problems regarding this to start in the class as 3.15. Ah, okay. Tenuda, uh, like, uh, won't you be able to reach at that time, Buddha? Ah, all right, okay. Uh, right, okay, like, right, right. Okay, some people are there who are reaching at 3.30. Never mind, never mind. We'll, we'll go with that. If it is harder for anyone, uh, it's, it's uh, no point of uh, dragging it up. Yeah, if you, if, you, if you guys can just try to come at 3.25, right? So it will be, like, at least I can get a five minutes break uh, if, I, if I reach to the uh, other one. Liseni and Tenuda, will it be okay if I started at 3.25? Because you won't be missing anything because I start the session at 3.25 and when the people are gathering, like there will be two to three minutes, uh, which is pending. So then you can come and catch up. So I can finish the class at uh, 4.55 then.
आई विल आई विल आई विल लिसेनी इज एट ओके टू स्टार्टिंग एट थ्री ट्वेंटी फाइव राइट ग्रेट सो लेट्स कीप दैट इन माइंड पीपल आई विल सेंड द मैसेज एज वेल वी आर स्टार्टिंग एट थ्री ट्वेंटी फाइव so i can finish at uh, 455 then all right so when you are done i'm going to tell you about this wbt the new term web based training right so uh, yeah one is done how about others All right. Anyone who is still writing? All right. So let's move forward. Ah, before we move forward, there is this new term called WBT in this paragraph, right? So the web-based training. So like web-based training. is kind of a training or like it's kind of a scenario that we are doing actually i am training you people to ict through these sessions now this is not purely wbt like wbt will uh, uh, take lots of resources like uh, learning management systems and some uh, uh, interactive programs and all these things it's like uh, like you can see the the general training of something like if i am if i am going to teach you things in the school face to face i will be there in the class i will be showing you the resources i will be showing you the presentations right through that right but uh, when it comes to the uh, web based training the same thing the same structure is going to go through the web and there will be some uh, the challenges as well right we won't be able to uh, perform each and everything that we are performing uh, physically in the classroom as well as there will be some benefits because the some things which are not possible in the classroom can be possible with the wbt right like uh, if we don't have the projecting facility in the lab i won't be able Uh, to show you a one particular nice video but uh, through this i really don't need a projector to show you a video so i can share my screen you can watch the video through my screen right so those kind of things will be possible right so uh, there are ups and downs but when it comes to the web based training which is wbt uh, that is kind of a training which is given through online right where we are not meeting each other physically but still uh, we are making our or like we are increasing our competency levels right so uh, as the last line says it saves the time uh, as well as the money right so the traveling cost and all these things will be saved right so comparing to the data cost that you are spending uh traveling cost and the time specifically the time uh, that you are spending on the uh, uh, traveling uh, will be uh, well saved right when we are having uh, something online right okay so moving forward uh sanushi goes the same way like uh, teaching and training uh, it it has a slight different uh, like uh, now here i'm actually doing much into the teaching less in training when it comes to the training uh, the the activities and all these things which are being created given more to the students like you have to do some interacting uh, sessions you may ask to do some questionnaires some uh, online examinations so the Uh, the training part will be uh, much more right and and it specifies the subject as well 
like for a subject like this, the, the topic like this that we are talking right now, uh, it's kind of a theory lessons, right? So which we can't take more training uh, uh, regarding that. But when it comes to the practical sessions, I can give you a lot of practicals and ask you to do it, right? Then I can monitor you, even though uh, we are not going to that particular extent in these sessions. If we have the network, if we have the ability, if we have the resources, I can monitor each one of you from uh, each and every screen, whether you are doing the uh, particular practical in well, any mistakes that you are making. For that, actually, we need some additional resources like server computers, some powerful uh, uh, machines, right? Uh, so those kind of things, but still, uh, that is kind of a thing that we can do, right? So we can't say, it, Sanush, it's purely training and purely teaching. Both things will be mixed together, but the portion will get different, right? So when it comes to WBT, training will be the bigger portion, teaching will be the smaller portion, right? So in our case, Teaching will be the bigger portion and training will be a smaller portion. Got it, Dua? Right, great. It's great that you people are asking questions. That is the way that you have to learn things, right? All right, so here we go. Serves as a teaching aid, right? And uh, yeah, of course, you have to write these things down, people. So there will be uh, some things and uh, we have uh, very small things to go, right? So just let's complete this and we'll go and see what the video is, right? So this is the C part, serves as a teaching aid for the teachers. And then we only need to uh, mention about the LMS. Yes, I think, uh, yeah, did me, you just connect with us, right? Well, we have uh, written some of the, uh, we have done some of the writings. People, uh, can anyone mention how far we have went? Like how many pages did we wrote for today? So we can communicate it to did me. One CR page is on, right? Yeah, yeah. With me, so it's better you uh, leave a one CR page to her. So then you can continue from the place that you can see on the screen. It's the highlighted part. All ah, right, okay. Right, okay, Sita.
All right, one is done. How about others? Okay, is there anyone who is still writing? Okay, so we are going to move forward. So the last one is learning management systems. I think you can remember the learning management system that we saw last week regarding Itaxala, right? So regarding learning management system, let's write it like this. Yes. Yeah, they haven't uh, talked about what is an LMS. I think uh, we better write a one single line uh, to explain what is LMS. So make this the very first uh, point under this topic. So you can write it like this, LMS, is a service, is a system, is a system that provides that provides learning materials, learning materials. and resources and resources in an electronic way. in an electronic way. In an electronic way, full stop and continue. From such system, from such system, both teachers and students both teachers and students will be facilitated, <clears throat> both teachers and students will be facilitated will be facilitated in performing their tasks, in performing their tasks. Right, so as the next point, as the next point, you may write it like this. Following are some services, 
following are some services. which are provided by which are provided by lms which are provided by lms so you can write the things on this picture as a list and I think they are not that clear for you so I will read those things out. So the first service you can write it either by putting a mark or a star or one two three doesn't matter. So the first service, student information, second service, teachers information, Third service, assignments. Fourth service, notes. Fifth service, Question and answers. Question and answers. Next one. Administration services. Administration services. administration services and the last one we can say planning planning Right. So yeah. Yes, it, it's better you write down this uh, table as well, which will explain the uh, some other services by learning management system. Uh, we'll do it like this, people. I'm going to uh, take a screenshot of this. And I'm going to send you this picture to the WhatsApp groups so you can uh, copy it down at home. Right, so I'll uh, send this to both the uh, WhatsApp group, right? So now I have sent those. So you can copy that uh, table in your book. So it's better you leave uh, how many rules? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, some 13 to 15 rules in your book. 
So leave that out, people. So you can complete it at home. And the very last point is about the higher education for everyone. Yeah, you may uh, copy this particular point. A person from any country can connect with a university or any other learning center for his choice and pursue a higher education at a considerably low cost. This is called online distance learning. And you have to write about the features as well. Okay, one is finished. How about others?
All right, anyone who is still writing? All right, so now I'm going to show you how the ICT technology can be effectively used into the education. That's I'm, I'm, what I'm going to show is, it is an opportunity that we can use, right? That we, in most probably that we get to use in near future, right? Let's see what is this is all about. Right, let me uh, load the video. Now yeah, now, uh, I don't know whether you have seen this before. This is the uh, introduction of the HoloLens in 2019 in the uh, Microsoft uh, introductory program. So just see how amazing it is, right? I'll uh, share this with the sound, otherwise you won't be able to hear the sound. Yeah, there you go. It's a pleasure to be here in Las Vegas to present to you. Now, I get invited to do keynotes across the globe. And while it's easy for me to be here in Las Vegas, it isn't always easy for me to travel across the world. And even when I do, I can't always speak the local language. Well, what if neither language nor distance mattered for me to deliver a fantastic keynote? What if technology could help me be anywhere I needed to be and speak any language I wanted? Well, it can. We are bringing together the power of mixed reality and Azure AI services to create a truly game-changing experience. What you're about to see is an exact hologram of me wearing the same outfit that we recently captured at a mixed reality studio. And I don't speak Japanese, but what if I wanted to deliver my keynote in Japanese? Using Azure AI technology, I can translate my English into Japanese and train it to sound exactly like me, the same voice tones, those same inflections. Now we've brought this together, my hologram and Azure AI, to show you what's possible. So first, I'm gonna put on my HoloLens 2 here, and then we'll flip in the room to the special camera so you can see exactly what I'm seeing. Let's get started. First, let me introduce you to Mini-Me. There she is, my perfect holograph. Yeah, people, now what you are seeing is the thing that this lady is going to uh, see in her lens, in the holo lens, the device that she is wearing, right? So they have uh, made some holograms over here for others to be watched, right? So when you are wearing this particular HoloLens, it will show you something like this, right? Not that the hologram is going to be at the in front of you, but it will give you the output from the HoloLens, right? But since she is presenting it, they have uh, used some special cameras to make what she is going to see from her HoloLens, which will be uh, illustrated at, at in front of them, right? So everyone can see this on this moment. And thanks to the power of HoloLens 2, she just floats right with me. I'm literally holding my hologram, so natural. Now she's a little small to do a keynote. So let's get her up so she can do full size Japanese keynote. Render keynote.
当に驚くべきことがあります私たちは最新の複合現実キャプチャ技術を使用し私のホログラムを作成しています実在の人物をホログラムとして見たことがあるかもしれませんが私が実際に日本語を話しているのが新しいのです私は日本語を話しませんが私の声とホログラムは完璧な日本語で話していますこれはニューラルテキスト読み上げと呼ばれる最新の人工知能技術いわゆるニューラル TTS を使用しています私たちは自分の声の録音を使用し私のように聞こえる私自身の個人的な音声署名を作成します日本語からフランス語ポルトガル語まで話せます今この技術は私たちが働き遊び生活する方法に関して世界中の国境や障壁を取り除くことができると想像してみてくださいまさに SF が現実になるところです Okay, people. So、uh, that's how the technology, the extension of the technology that can be, right? So think about this technology、uh, is mixed with the education, right? So I am、uh, here doing an online session with you people. If I have that technology, so I can、uh, present my presentation, I can do this lecture. r With you as well as with all the people in the country or maybe in the world by using different kinds of languages, right? So the geographical location doesn't matter as well as the language doesn't matter, right? If they have the technology, they can convert what I'm saying into the Tamil, into the、uh, some other language, right? So they can、uh, stream it live to everyone. And with the hologram technologies, they can have someone like me in front of every student group, right? So they will feel that they are having the lesson or the lecture by myself presenting on, the, on their particular geographical location, right? So This will go to that extent, right? This was a video which was published in 2019, right? So now it is 2022, right? Which is now it is very much advanced, right? So we will, most probably, you will experience these k i n d of things, right? So let's see. So that is how the、uh, ICT can be merged or like can be taken、uh, with the help of the ICT. Uh, in the world, right? So, next we are going to go to the health sector, right? So, I have the、uh, presentation that we watched last week. It has some、uh, details about the health sector as well. Let's go through that first, then we'll go through the note. Okay, so when it comes to the health sector,、uh, This is the,、uh, one of the best things that、uh, the health sector has、uh, absorbed into. Like they have these modern t y p e of devices where they can、uh, scan the organs and the body parts of, of a particular human and they can give the solutions, right? And they can find the,、uh, uh, the, 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 the symptoms of a, some particular illnesses, right? And、uh, with these k i n d of devices, Medical people will help the ordinary people to have a better life, right? So, like、uh, when it comes to the dental scanning kind of things, right? They will just like now earlier when the dental scanning is need, when the dental scanning is not there, if, if the dental doctor n e e d to have an idea about the,、uh, the, the arrangement of the teeth uh, uh, in, in, in particular、uh, person's mouth. so He h a v e to take some particular、uh, structure, plaster of Paris f a g e a mold e kappa, i c h i k a l a They put it into the、uh, mouth and they ask us to like bite it, right? Because I have had the experience、uh, earlier. Then they will take that mold and see how our、uh, uh, the arrangement of the teeth in the mouth, right? So, but nowadays it's not like that. They can just scan. 
and take a 3D model and they can do the arrangements as they want. This is how the things are going to be arranged. Like so, that, that will be very much easier for the patient to not to have any, uh, what, the hardness or, or, or uh, uncomfortable situations uh, to be followed when they are having the treatments, right? And uh, this is some very uh, famous devices that uh, the people are talking about, like ECG, right? Electrocardiogram machines, right? So you all know why ECG is used, right? So ECG will monitor uh, the heartbeat of a particular person. So some uh, particular sensors will be uh, fixed into the heart, right? Uh, like to the chest actually, right? So then it will monitor the beat of the heart and through the sensors, it will uh, uh, give an output to a monitor, like, like that you can see it over here, how the heart beating is happening, right? So when a doctor gets to see that, he can recognize whether this heartbeat is a normal one or an abnormal one, right? So the thing that you can see on your right is an EEG output. So EEG stands for electroencephalography, right? So electroencephalography machine is specifically there to uh, monitor about the brain activities of a particular person, right? So like the picture describes, so these kind of sensors are fixed into the brain. I'll show you a nice video uh, that they are doing this, uh, this particular electroencephalography uh, thing. So then they will, uh, when the machine is on, then these sensors will take the activity of the brain and then it will give the output to a screen where a particular medical person will be able to manage it. Ah, yes, yes, we saw, right? And, uh, and this, of course, this uh, simulation, Right, but this simulation is not uh, very much uh, done in our hospitals. I haven't seen any, but uh, for the people who are practicing the medical, uh, as for an initial point, right, they can uh, have this kind of simulation uh, techniques for their studies. Hold on a minute, people. Right, so like uh, for medical students, they can uh, do their initial investigations regarding organs by uh, in this kind of technologies. I don't know whether you have experienced the AR technology, uh, augmented reality, we say, right? Uh, and there is a, uh, uh, before the AR, the VR was in introduced, virtual reality thing. I think you all have uh, experience the VR technology, right? Using some VR box, right? So you can still uh, experience the AR technology as well. Some of these exhibitions are uh, introducing this AR technology, augmented reality. So the difference between the AR and the VR, AR technology, the augmented reality technology is, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go you, Raisan. I'll, I'll show you some things, right? So with, with AR, augmented reality, A and R, A for Apple and R for, uh, uh, yes, uh, for Rat, right? So with AR, uh, they are just uh, giving us this kind of a device, right? And with that, we will be having a 3D model in front of our eyes, right? So we actually can, uh, uh, interact with the 3D model. We can turn it, we can explore it, we can go into it, we can come out of it, right? So it's a very nice experience. I have experienced uh, a one uh, AR experience in one of the exhibitions, which was held in Youth Center, right? It was a very nice experience. It, uh, they were explaining about the cell of a human body. So we can explore the cell, 
Like we, we actually can walk into the cell and see what are the components inside the cell. We can walk out and see the uh, structure of the cell, right? Uh, it, it, it gives us a very nice experience, right? When it comes to the VR, the virtual reality, it's kind of a, a video that we can see in front of us. So it's just a video which is given us with the uh, uh, experience of the re reality in the virtual manner, right? We won't be able to interact with the objects when we are having the virtual reality experience. We, we only can see that, right? But when it comes to the augmented reality, we can interact with the objects, right? We can walk around, we can see it in many different ways, we can turn the things as we want. It's, it's like we are having some particular object in front of us, right? But it's not real, it's, it's, it's a something or it's some pictures which is created by the device that we are uh, wearing with our eyes, right? So these kind of technologies will help the uh, medical students specifically uh, to uh, manage the things, right? And uh, yeah, for the moment, actually, I don't have a video regarding this AR experience. I will show you on, uh, on next week by searching the things, right? There are some nice things, right? So it is one of the uh, uh, ways that we can use the ICT in the medical sector. And yeah, this is what you call telemedicine, right? So telemedicine is like uh, given the medical treatment in a remote manner, right? So under telemedicine, there are different kinds of uh, uh, categories, which is called the emergency telemedicine, home health medicine, Telemedicine consultations, telesurgeries, medical treat, uh, I'm sorry, medical teletraining, right? So I think uh, uh, we all are experience telemedicine consultation these days, right? We are not usually visiting to the hospitals through this uh, uh, through the devices. We are talking to the doctor, right? And we are. Uh, uh, like telling our symptoms regarding our sickness. So the doctor will prescribe some uh, medicines, but uh, telemedicine is not always matched with everything or every uh, uh, health uh, requirement, but most of the things will be able to cover, cover from that. Not the serious cases, but the normal and regular cases can be handled, right? So what do we mean by the emergency telemedicine? It's a, it's a network of, medical treatments like uh, I can register to the telemedicine services if it is available in Sri Lanka as per my knowledge it is not available in Sri Lanka fully right some of the services are there but not the entire package right so yeah in Italy I'll, I'll show you one I'll show you one right so the telemedicine concept it's like, uh, it's like this, I am registered with the telemedicine service. So the uh, medical people, the people from the hospital, they, will, they, are, they are in touch with me for have some emergency treatments, if I need some emergency treatments. So they will be communicating in a very fast manner and will send an ambulance or a medical treatment as soon as possible to myself to, or to my location whenever I need it. Right, so when I am registered with them, I will be in some particular system. So that system will allow me to inform them uh, about my condition or uh, someone else who is closer to me will be able to uh, inform them about my condition. So they will uh, direct the needful things. If it is an ambulance, the ambulance will be uh, uh, taken into my uh, uh, doorstep or if it is a medical treatment which need to be uh, done by a doctor or a nurse, those people will be uh, visit to myself. And it is purely uh, managing an emergency situation. So if it, is a, if it is a real emergency, they will uh, take me from an ambulance to the hospital. So meanwhile, I'm reaching the hospital, the hospital will, uh, uh, will, will be ready to receive me uh, with all the details about my illness, right? Because everything is interconnected in this scenario, right? So when I am uh, taken into the ambulance, the people inside the ambulance will communicate with the hospital and tell what kind of a situation that uh, they have in the ambulance and with the patient. So the uh, uh, hospital is getting ready 
And when I'm registered with the telemedicine, they may have my history about my illnesses and all these things. So they will have the conclusions with the current symptoms that I'm having. Okay, these kind of situation, uh, maybe this kind of situation that this patient is going through. So we have to get ready with these things. So having the emergency telemedicine will increase the efficiency of the treatments, right? Because everyone is get ready with the things before the patient arrives at their place, right? So that kind of a service will be a very good service to treat the patient in an uh, accurate manner, in an efficient manner, which will result with the, uh, uh, the saving of the patient in an emergency situation, right? So what is uh, meant by the home health medicine? It's, it's something very simple. So uh, even, even these days we are having, but uh, this, in, in this concept, there is a slight difference uh, what we are dealing with is like we are when we are having home health medicine, we are in the we are at home, and our uh, the consultation or the or the consulting doctor will be on somewhere else, and with us there will be a medical person who has the experience of handling drugs, writing prescriptions, handling prescriptions, uh, taking care of a patient. So there will be a one. So he will be the intermediary person, he or she will be the intermediary person of the patient and the consultant, right? So when the consultant need to take the uh, medical related details, the, the consultant will uh, contact that medical person who is staying with me. When the consultant need to talk to patient, he or she will directly talk to the patient through a particular device. So then, uh, the communication in between these people can be done in a very fine manner. Then uh, they can prescribe any drugs if they need. They can give any advices if they need. So likewise, it can uh, the, the situation can be taken care of, right? So uh, that home health medicine, it's kind of taking care of a patient in a better way. Uh, like uh, telemedicine consultation is something that ourselves and the consultation self doing in a direct communication way, right? So no uh, third party is involved in regarding this particular thing. We are just having a call or a video conference with the uh, particular consultant. So we are telling them the symptoms and the consultant will prescribe us some medicines. It's not a long-term one. It's not uh, uh, a treatment that is always going on with the time. It's just for that particular moment. Like as an example, if we get some uh, symptoms regarding the cold, we just having a, a medical session with the doctor and saying the symptoms that we are getting uh, like what sore throats and uh, runny nose and all these things. So he will uh, examine those things and he will prescribe some of the drugs. But there are some situations where we can't take uh, prescriptions or like we, we, where, where the drugs cannot be prescribed through this kind of services, right? For, on those situations, uh, the doctor will advise us. It is not the uh, it is not a good case to go through a, a telemedicine consultation or, or, a, or an online conversation. It's better you visit to the nearest hospital and uh, visit to a doctor uh, to have the treatments to this kind of illness, right? So remember, it is it is not always okay, but uh, there are certain situations where we can get use of these things. Telesurgery. Someone asked about this, how the telesurgery happens, right? It's, it's not the concept that uh, the, uh, the surgical people are somewhere else and the person is somewhere else and they are doing the uh, telesurgery through a screen or something. That is not possible, people, right? When it comes to the telesurgeries, the surgeons will be there with the patient, right? But the main doctor or the, or the main surgeon may not be there with the other surgeons. He may contact in the uh, surgeons from somewhere else in the world. Like, like when it comes to the main surgeon, he's always like guiding the people to do the surgery, right? Which is possible to do through a screen as well. So he or she, the main surgeon or the uh, group of surgeons, will be connected uh, with the, uh, op uh, the operation theater 
and uh, we'll guide the people to do such things in this particular manner to do the operation, right? Sometimes you may, uh, you may have seen some of the videos in the internet. They are using some camera equipments to examine the uh, patient's inner organs, right? So when the consultants are contacting remotely, they can also have the same feed and they can see what is actually going on with this camera and they can assist the surgeons who are with the patient to make a success operation, right? So that is what we call telesurgery, the remote surgery, right? And uh, medical teletraining, that is of course, uh, like we talked about the WBT, the web-based training, these kind of trainings are possible, right? Now, when it comes to the medical sector, uh, the people who are having that knowledge are limited in numbers in the world. Like if you take a professor or kind of a medical uh, uh, executive or like a, a medical professional, right? They are not uh, that uh, available to the entire world, right? Sometimes there can be a, a, a professional in our country, but uh, many of the medical people from all around the round, all around the world will need his uh, assistance or will need his advisors right so if this kind of a facility is not there he has to visit to that particular country and he have to give the training for those kind of people but when we are having this kind of facilities that particular person can stay on one geographical location and convey his uh, the knowledge and the uh, services and the experience to the a very big amount of audience, right? So many people can contact from many different countries to these particular sessions. So they will get to know about the experience of the professionals, right? So that is something that we call medical teletraining. Okay, is that clear everyone? Right. All right. So let's write some things about this. So let me see what do we have here to write. Yeah. So have the heading ICT in health sector. Right, and uh, you can go with this subheading, use of ICT in diagnosis, that will be the first category. Right, so under that, ah uh, yeah, it's better you write this down then we can uh, talk about these machines and we'll just write about the machine name. We don't need to go through the uh, explanations, right? Just write about this particular thing and we'll go through the uh, machines that we have.
Uh, yeah, Rison, uh, I'll explain and uh, let you write the example, Huda. So for the moment, just write the uh, highlighted part. So under that, we'll write the uh, examples after I uh, explain those things to you. So are we done? Anyone who is still writing? Right, so we are moving forward. So the first example is about the CAT machine, which is called the computerized axial tomography machine. So this is used to take 3D images, right? So it can use to take 3D images of many parts of different parts of the body. So which will help the uh, uh, doctors and the uh, uh, medical people to diagnose a disease. Right, so it will give you a much clearer one or, or like much clearer aspects for the people to get clear with what's the disease are, right? So you don't need to say example one. So you have uh, in this particular paragraph by saying some example of these machines are So under that you can put one and you can just write the machine name. Right? You don't need to write the uh, explanation, but the thing is you have to remember when it says the cat machine, what kind, what is the purpose of the cat machine? So like, remember it simply, right? Having uh, 3D images of the body. So the, uh, the medical people will be able to diagnose it easily, right? So the first example, cat machine, it's better you write the uh, extraction as well because some of the MCQs are uh, having these kind of uh, questions, what stands for CAT kind of things. Right, so I'm moving forward. If someone missed the uh, name or the note, just let me know, right? So the next machine, which is called the MRI, right? That stands for Magnetic Resonance Imaging Machine. So I think uh, this, is, this is majorly uh, under the brain activities, right? To uh, uh, take the uh, digitalized image of the brain activities, right, uh, in, in majorly, but it can be used to take the, uh, uh, again, the digitalized images of a lot of body parts according to the, uh, uh, the requirement of the medical people, right? So MRI is another machine that is used to take the digitalized images. It, this is not giving you a 3D one, but a digitalized one, right? So more into with colors and all these things, right? They can have it. And in the same screen, you can see the ECG. And we discuss about the ECG when we are going through the presentation. 
So just uh, have that as well. Electrocardiogram machine. So you may list these things down, right? As the examples. Right, so the fourth example is the cardiac screening machine. Right, so this is something advanced than the ECG. So electrocardiogram, it's just giving us the beat and some graph regarding the heartbeat. So cardiac screening machine, it gives us a, a, a picture. Actually it is uh, taken using the audio waves, right? So uh, it will show us, not, not us actually, it will show the medical people about a detailed description regarding the heart, right? Even though we can't understand anything from the screen, the medical people will surely do, right? So they will uh, apply some gel around the uh, chest and they will uh, use the sonar waves to uh, examine what's going on with the heart beating and the components and all these things, right? So that is what we call cardiac screening machine. So you can write down the thing that I have highlighted over here. Right, then the EEG, the machine that we talked about, electroencephalography machine. And some simple machine as we know, the blood sugar tested machine, right? It is something very famous now, right? I think uh, maybe your parents or maybe your grandparents are having a blood sugar testing machine so they can have a very little drop of a blood and uh, have it on a stripe and insert into this machine and it will tell like uh, what is the blood sugar level. The thing is you have to remember what are the extraction of these EEGs, ECGs, and all these things, right? So that is why I'm listing these things down. And after blood sugar testing machine, there is something similar uh, machine, which is that we are using blood pressure measuring machine. And I have the experience regarding this machine, right? Uh, which is not, uh, the my one is not something to wear on the wrist. It is something to wear on my arm, like the upper arm, right? Uh, uh, Pahandi ultrasound scanner, yes, that can also be taken. Like it's kind of an ultrasound scanning that they are doing when they are doing that uh, cardiac screening thing, right? So like, uh, but it's, it's when it comes to the cardiac screening, it's a separate thing that they are doing. When it comes to the ultrasound scanning, yeah, you can do, you can take a one. Yes, yes, reason.
Right, so after the blood pressure measuring machine, we are about to write up, uh, we, are, we are there to write about the telemedicine. Uh, now, since it has some things to be written, people, uh, I will uh, end the session from this point, right? So we'll uh, write about the telemedicine by next week, right? We got another two minutes to go until the five. So by next week, we are meeting at 325, like five minutes earlier. So please remember that people, right? I'll send the message as well. So I'll end the session for today from here. So by next week, we will write about the telemedicine and continue to the other sectors, right? Okay, people, so thank you very much. And I'll meet you on next week for the very same time. Right. All right. Have a very good night, people. Thank you very much.